Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Lakers flashback rebuild here on NBA 2K22. I hope you guys are excited because we are in episode 15, season 15 of the Lakers rebuild. And in the last episode, we spun the wheel and we got the 2018 NBA draft class. And if you guys are history buffs, you know the 2018 draft class included one Luka Doncic. That's right. And guess who drafted him? Ya boy. Ya boy drafted Luka Doncic. He is going to be playing on the team. Uh, there he is. He's right here. Where number 77, only a 79 overall. Well, he's an 80 overall, but he's gone down because the beginning of the season, some morale has gone down. But this is what the team is looking like for season number 15. We've got Jalen Suggs, who we got in the episode when we got Luka last episode. So you want to go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. Because we made a lot of moves. And you may notice there's a certain player missing from the power forward spot. T Kevin Durant is not here. And that's because we traded him to get the number one overall pick. Right? We traded him to, did we trade him to get the number one overall pick? I think we did. We've got Kobe Bryant, who's up to a 97. And he's only in, uh, what is this, year three? Oh, no, it's year five. He's been here for a while. I forgot how long he's been here. He's been here for a while now. This is year five for him. LeBron is in year three. LeBron's the one that's in year three. Uh, or year four, I guess you could say. So we've also got DeAndre Ayton, who's our starting center. Remember, we traded Evan Mobley a couple episodes ago to get uh, some draft picks. So we've got... Jalen Suggs, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Taj Gibson, and DeAndre Ayton. And then Gail Goodrich off the bench with Josh Christopher, Tracy McGrady, Luka Doncic, Miles Bridges, and Darko Militic. Are those the guys that are going to be getting minutes for us? We're going to run 11-man rotation. Is this team better than what it was last season or in previous seasons? Probably not, but we just need to work out this front court here. If we can develop DeAndre Ayton into a stud, like a, a low low 90s, high 80s center, that'll be good. And then we can focus on getting a power forward. I mean, we could even play LeBron at power forward and then move Kobe to small forward, have Luka play shooting guard, and then have Jalen Suggs play point guard. These are all possibilities. Or we could play Luka at point guard and then trade Jalen Suggs for a big man. That's also a possibility. But also in this episode, I do want to throw out there that we are probably going to be trading two players in this episode. We're probably going to be trading uh, Gail Goodridge and Josh Christopher. One, Gail Goodridge we re-signed, but we didn't really want to. I only re-signed him for a sign-in trade. Josh Christopher is on the last year of his deal, and I don't think we're going to bring him back. Uh, he was recently signed and cannot be traded until January 27. You know what? This is a, this is, this is my, this is my world. I'm going to go change the all the the trade rules so that we don't have any trade restrictions and then i'll come back to you when we have uh, all that stuff good and done so i we don't we don't need any trade restrictions this is my world this is my universe i do what i want all right so we're back and i turned off all the financial trade restrictions and the recently signed trade restrictions i turned all that stuff off because nobody nobody cares about that we don't we don't need to follow those rules this is this is my rules i make up the rules as we go so Gail Goodridge, we are going to throw in just straight up and see what we can get. So, let's see. Can we get anything interesting? They've been trying to throw Glenn Rice at me for a while, and I don't know if I want to do that or not. The only problem with trading a guy like Gail Goodridge is, yes, he's got four-star value, but we just signed him to a max contract extension. So, we are going to have to take some money back. Ooh, Joakim Noah on a one-year rental and a first-round pick? I don't hate that. I really don't hate that. Jonathan Kaminga and Davion Mitchell for both Goodrich and Christopher? I don't hate this either. Okay, so we got some interesting options here. We could bring back Jermaine O'Neal, but we'd have to give up a, 30, a 2036 first round pick. Ray Allen and Jerry Lucas. We could get Jerry Lucas back. Ray Allen has been a top scorer, but we don't really need a guard. We need a big man, which is why I'm I'm interested in this deal. I mean, I know it's not a big man. But I'm interested in that deal, and I'm interested in this deal for Joakim Noah. He's a one-year rental. He's been in... This is his uh, first full season in New York. Well, it was going to be his first full season if we do trade for him. Uh, he is on the last year of his deal with a player option next year. He's been a two-time All-Star, and he was an All-Rookie first-teamer. Ten years in the league. 
He hasn't really done crazy numbers, but he's more of a defensive guy. He's 32 years old. Is this the move for Gail Goodrich? We'd be getting back a first round pick next year. Is this, or actually that's this year's pick, isn't it? Is this the move? Giving up Good, Gail Goodridge for a one-year rental of Joakim Noah. I think this is the best option for us. Goodridge, go to New York and do your thing, my guy. Go to New York and do your thing. So now we've got Josh Christopher, who we're going to be giving up. But that gives more minutes to... Uh, no, 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 no. We're not going to have Joakim Noah coming, or starting. We're going to have DeAndre Ayton starting. We definitely want to have DeAndre Ayton starting at center, just so he can get as much development time as possible. But we are going to trade Josh Christopher. We are going to probably look to get a draft pick back for that, I guess. So if we take a look at our picks, we have our pick, in, or we have the Nuggets pick and the Knicks pick this year. So we just got that Knicks pick uh, in that trade. So let's see what we can do with Josh Christopher. He's been a solid player for us, but if he can get us back either a pick or a solid bench player... That would be very, very interesting. Vlade Divac, who is 27 years old and a 2038 first round pick. I don't hate that deal. Jerry Lucas, Usman Garuba. It looks like that deal for Vlade and the 2038 first. We'd also be giving up Sam Bowie, who we have on a, a one year minimum. Hmm. Is it worth getting Divac just for the first? I don't think it is. I don't think it's it's worth getting him just to have <laughs> that first round pick because we have a lot of centers already. So, and especially bringing in <laughs> bringing in uh, Joakim Noah just then. I'm probably not looking for a big man now. I'm looking for either draft picks or a shooting guard, point guard, maybe maybe more of a point guard to come off the bench. And I don't think we're gonna find that in this trade. But if I throw you a couple seconds, I got a second. Is there somebody that is willing to give up some picks? Uh, Davion in a second. No, Al Thornton in a second. I'm not really seeing anything that great. So we might have to make our own trade. Or I guess we could just keep Josh Christopher for the season. I mean, he's not going to hurt anything. He's a nice backup small forward. But we do have Miles Bridges that I'd like to develop. So... Let's see, who's a nice backup player? Bob Boozer's on a three-year contract still at 33 years old. Where is Will Chamberlain at this point? Is he, he's not out of the league, I couldn't, I wouldn't think, right? Where is Wilt? He's on the Wizards now, he's digressing, or he's regressing, and he's making a ton of money. What's the makeup on this? We'd have to make up $26 million if we wanted to trade for Will Chamberlain. We have that, but do we want to trade? I mean, I could give them Joakim Noah. Oh, I'd still have to give up Josh Christopher. Would this go through? Would they take Joakim Noah and Josh Christopher for Will Chamberlain on a one-year deal? $58.7 million? They agree to the trade, so Joakim Noah and Josh Christopher go to the Wizards, and we bring in Will Chamberlain, somebody that I wanted since day one in the league, and he's here finally, on the Lakers. Wilt is on the Lakers. That's crazy. Let's play DeAndre at, at power forward. Let's play DeAndre at power forward, give him some minutes. Wow, I just changed this team a whole lot, didn't I? I just changed this team like crazy. So we've got a shooting guard. We've got a player that can play point guard. We've got a player that can play small forward, power forward. Uh, Purvis Ellison, I don't really want you on the team. I'll give your minutes to Darko. Let's have Darko get some minutes just because I like Darko. All right, that's what the team's going to look like. With all that being done, we haven't even done the spin yet. We haven't even spun the wheel for the draft pick yet. So... Let's do that really quick and figure out what uh, draft class we're even going to be going after this year. So, 3, 2, 1, spin that wheel. I'm hoping we get like a Kareem draft class or something. Ooh, okay, we're in that era. 
1970. 1970. I don't think that's Wilt's class. Or that's uh, Kareem's class, if I'm not mistaken. 1970 draft class. I don't even know. At least we're going back into the time machine pretty far this time. 1970. Who could that be? I don't think Kareem was 70, was he? I thought he was always 69. Nice. This could be... I guess this could be Jerry West. No, he wasn't in the 70s. He was in the 60s for sure. Who was this? 19... 70. Who was the 1970 class? So this one looks to be the, the most downloaded and the most updated one. Who was in it? Uh, we've got Jeff Petrie. Oh, he's scary. Nate Archibald. Charlie Scott. Wendell Ladner. Bob Lanier. Pistol Pete. Okay, so this isn't... This isn't uh, Kareem's class, but it's still a decent class. Pistol Pete, Pete Maravich is a very good player. So is Bob Lanier. Dave Cowens is a Hall of Famer. Ruby, uh, Rudy Tomjanovich is good. Calvin Murphy is good. Ralph Simpson. Dan Issel is even good. So this is a good class. It's nothing, nothing to write home about. I probably wouldn't... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat if I don't get a top five pick in this class. So I mean it's a it's a good class, 1970. What do you, what can you expect? But we gotta go to the all-star draft and see what how this team is doing. I made some pretty big trade trades to start this episode. I hope they work out in our favor. I guess we'll have to wait and see as we get to the halfway point. I'll see you guys then. Okay, so we're here at the all-star draft. And we currently sit as the number one seed in the entire Western Conference, 36 and 18. We've had some struggles, but there's one thing that I want to show you guys right off the bat before we get into anything else, and that is why we have Miles Bridges playing at small forward. And that is because LeBron James is out for the entire season. He just got hurt this week, like the week that we are in right now. He, he ruptured his left Achilles. He is done for the year. That is crucial absolutely crucial to our season he was averaging 18.7 and about seven assists five rebounds he was playing about as good as he's been playing his entire career but he has had an injury that is taking him out for the rest of the year and now we've got ellison who i don't want starting i want deandre ayton starting i thought i had that at the beginning but i think deandre ayton got hurt a little bit uh we can check the stats and all that stuff as we get moving on but all-star draft it's team rick and team hakeem so team rick barry and team hakeem olajuwon so team hakeem olajuwon he drafts kevin durant former laker james harden steve uh stephen marbury larry bird bob boozer michael jordan charles barkley dave debusher jalen green kobe and carmelo and team rick barry he drafts chris weber chris paul blake griffin Cade cunningham steph curry mike conley vin baker jamal mashburn steve nash evan mobley and jonathan kominga so out of all these all-stars we have one two three three former lakers that are all make the all-star team on their new teams kevin durant steph curry and evan mobley good for them Good for them. Stats on the season so far. Kobe's got 22. He's a 98 overall at this point in the league. Average about six assists. Then we saw LeBron's numbers, but he's done for the year. Then Jalen Suggs, he's going to have to step it up. Luka's going to have to step it up in his first season. He's up to an 81 overall. So is T-Mac. He's going to have to step up as well. He is uh, averaging 12 points. Then you got Wilt playing really well at 32 years old, his first year on the Lakers. He only had two years in Washington. He had a few years in Boston, but all of his major stuff came in Phoenix. Then you got DeAndre Ayton, who's doing okay, but he kind of got, his stats are skewed a little bit because he got bumped to the bench for Purvis Ellison, whose numbers are here. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of sucky there, but are we going to be able to recover without LeBron James? I think we will because we still have Kobe. We still have Jalen Suggs. We still have Will Chamber. We still got guys that can get buckets. We've got T-Mac and Luka off the bench. So we still got guys that can get their, their shots in and score some buckets for us. So I think we'll be fine. But when it comes to playoff time, that's a whole different story. But we'll have to wait and see until that happens. I'll see you guys at the awards. Season 15 is wraps and Rick Barry for the third straight year. I'm pretty sure for the third straight year. 
if we can see his award history. Yeah, 34, 35, and 36. Third straight year, Rick Barry wins the MVP. Looks like it's his league now. He's taken over. And we had the option to draft him. We probably should have. Jaron Jackson Jr. wins Rookie of the Year. Shane Edwards is the sixth man. Hakeem Olajuwon is the DPOY. Good for him. Gerald Henderson is the most improved player. Oliver Gordon wins Coach of the Year. And Cody Toole wins the Executive of the Year. Once again, we get uh, shafted at the Executive of the Year. Michael Jordan finally making an All-NBA First Team. Good for him. He's finally starting to develop. Oh, I forgot to change what he looked like. I'll, I'll get that at some point. Uh, Marbury, Rick Barry, Larry Bird, and Akeem on the All-NBA First Team. Second Team is Steve Nash, Dwayne Wade, Charles Barkley, Carmelo, and Evan Mobley. Third team is Chris Paul, Cade Cunningham, Sharif Abdurrahim, Kevin Durant, who is sprained his right knee, and Marcus Saul. All defensive first team. Here's the defensive first team. Here's the defensive second team. Will Chamberlain, who, by the way, fractured his left leg in his first season with the Lakers and is out for the season as well. So we've got two season any injuries on this roster right now. That's crazy. All rookie first team. Luka makes it. Um, second team, Obamba, Michael Porter, Robert Williams, Sexton, and Anthony Melton. Those are your All-NBA teams. We still ended up being the first seed, even with these uh, crazy injuries. So let's take a look at how the players did to end the season. Kobe kept up his scoring. It's a good thing we got a guy like Kobe because we need a, a big-time score with LeBron out and with Will Chamberlain out now. Jalen Suggs did really well. Not as good as he was doing on the Portland Trailblazers, but he was the main guy in Portland. He's not hes not the main guy anymore in, in L.A. Luka did good in his rookie year. I'm proud of him. Tracy McGrady did good as well. Bumped up his numbers a lot from last season, his rookie year. Will Chamberlain got injured and uh, probably wasn't going to win Defensive Player of the Year anyway, but definitely wasn't going to win it when he got injured. And DeAndre Ayton in his rookie year, I'm proud of what he did. Miles Bridges did okay off the bench. Darren Collison even played really well. We got some good minutes out of him. So that's what our team is looking like. The stats for the rest of the league. Kevin Durant took home his first ever scoring title after being uh, kind of the second option at times in LA. He shows what he can do in when he's got his own team and he puts up 30 points, takes home the scoring title. Michael Jordan right behind him. Chris Paul, Abdur Rahim, Steve Nash. Who you don't really think putting up a lot of points, but he does in this series. Our first guy is probably going to be Kobe down here at the lower half, and he's 27th. So that's what the rest of the league is looking like. We're going to be taking on the Golden State Warriors with Ray Allen. They also have uh, Dana Barros, Ray Allen, Jeff Green, Cliff Robinson, and Akeem Olajuwon. This is going to be a tough matchup, especially because look at our... <laughs> look, we just got Jalen Suggs and Kobe at this point. We don't have LeBron, and we don't have Will Chamberlain. I don't know how far we're going to go in this playoff run. These, these injuries have been worse than they've ever been but game one we take game two we also take game three they take game four they take game five we take and game six they take so we're going to a game seven in in a uh, round one that's not what you want <laughs> you don't want to have to go to a game seven in round one and it's back and forth and they finally take over here it is a tie ball game. I got to jump in. 86-86 with 36 seconds left. Oh, it's meant to be. It is meant to be. Jalen Suggs to inbound, or McGrady to inbound to Jalen Suggs. Can he get something going? We got to give it to the Mamba, right? It's got to be Kobe who gets the bucket for us. There's Kobe. He puts it up and he gets it in. Kobe Bryant takes the lead. 88-86 with 28.7 seconds to go. Oh my word. We got to do it for Braun. We got to do it for Wilt. Davis to inbound. He finds Barros. Down low to Davis. He puts the shot up and he makes it. And a timeout called by LA. 25 seconds left. It's an 88-88 ball game. Give this ball to Kobe Bean Bryant and let him work. Oh, it's Tracy McGrady in now. Okay. I don't have my substitution on. Oh, I left him in the dust. T-Mac. And he gets it to go. Get that man a map. I broke him. Barros with the ball. This Lakers crowd is enthused. They're on their feet. Barros. Oh, he stepped back on me. Okay, good. I didn't get lost. I thought he was going to do the same thing I did to him. Jalen Suggs playing tight defense on him. He's going to take a bad shot. It's no good. And the Lakers survive. 
We're going on! A bad shot by the point guard! Jalen Suggs with a lockdown defense and the Lakers are moving on to the second round. It took us seven games, but we did it. T-Mac was the man to send us through. Big time W's in game seven. That's what I love to see. Jalen Suggs in 30 minutes, he put up 15 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. Absolutely amazing. Luka off the bench had 14 and six. Kobe had 13 and six. McGrady had 13. Bridges had 11. DeAndre had 10 and eight. You love to see it from the boys, and we move on. We survive the first round of the playoffs against the Warriors. And we're playing the Utah Jazz, who have Drew Holiday, Jalen Green, Nick Young, Billy Cunningham, and Mo Bamba. Jalen Green, one of the best scorers in the league. And he is on the Utah Jazz in that front or in that backcourt with Drew Holiday. This is gonna be a tough matchup. But we took down the Warriors, who had Akeem Olajuwon. We take game one. We take game two. We take game three. Oh, they take game four. They take game five. And we take game six. All right, I thought we were going to get a little bit of a uh, another game seven. I don't think we could handle another game seven. But Jalen Green in the, the closeout game put up 35, so he didn't go down without a fight. But we had two guys who put up 30, so you can't really compete with that. Luka's starting to shine here in his rookie season. Uh, here we go, Western Conference Finals. We're going up against Steph Curry, Dick Van Arsdale, Tony Campbell, Bob Love, and Kai Jones. Interesting matchup. Kobe versus Curry. Well, Kobe versus uh, Van Arsdale. Curry versus Suggs. And Curry wanted to be on his own. He wanted to lead a team by himself. He didn't want to be in LA anymore. And he finally does it. He led him to the two seed. And we're he's taking on his former team in the Conference Finals. Game one is a Dallas victory. Game two is a Laker victory. Game three is a Dallas win. Game four is a Dallas win. All right, all right, all right. We got to get a little thing figured out here. We're going to go down to a nine-man rotation. Give everybody the minutes. Suggs needs to get minutes. Uh, Call said I'm going to take even more minutes and get more minutes to, to uh, Luca. Luca's definitely got to have minutes. Is this where we fall? Is this where not having, is this where not having LeBron and, and Will Chamberlain come back to bite us? We've done okay so far, but it looks like I don't. Oh, we're fighting. It's close. We are right there with the Mavs, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. 108.95. I'll try and jump in, but I don't think it's gonna happen. We just don't have the firepower without LeBron and Will Chamberlain on the team, with them being injured. Getting to the Western Conference Finals does feel good, but even Luka can't cover that, and it's 110 to 95. I don't think it's going to happen, boys. I think our playoff run is coming to an end in the Conference Finals. T-Mac for three. T-Mac can't make it, and that's probably going to be it. I think we have the better team here if we just had everybody healthy, and we can't ever catch a break, can we? We can't ever catch a freaking break. We have finally had a season where I thought we were going to be pretty good. Then LeBron goes down with an injury. And I would have been fine with that. But then Chamberlain goes down. And not having the big man off the, on the uh, to protect the paint, that just hurts. And I don't think we're going to be able to survive this. So we will simcast out of this. And we are going to lose in the Western Conference Finals to Steph Curry. Who in game, uh, game what was this, game six? He put up 24 and 15. Jalen sucks at 21. Valiant effort from him, 21, 6, and 7. Luke had 17 and 7. McGrady had 16, 6, and 5. We just didn't have the firepower. Not not enough to keep up with with uh, with Curry and the Dallas Mavericks. But in 41 minutes, Kobe only put up nine points, five rebounds, and seven assists. That's it, Kobe. Nine points in an elimination game, Kobe. Come on, man. Curry gets to the finals. He's got a championship already, doesn't he? Let's go back to league history. Does does Curry have a a championship? No, he doesn't. He hasn't been to the finals. And it looks like, oh, Rick Barry was close. Who's in this game? Curry's got one win now. Who's on this Pacers team? Dave DeBusher has been an all-star. Anderson. Ron Anderson. Jay Humphreys. Eugene Carson. I don't know how this team... 
They're the three seed. I don't know how they beat Rick Barry's team, but they did. They got to the finals, and Curry might sweep them. He, oh, he doesn't, but he gets the gentleman sweep. Steph Curry gets a championship. Bob loves the MVP. That seems familiar. Curry can't even win the finals MVP on his, on his own team. So Steph Curry gets an NBA championship. Is this his second? Did we win one with him? Oh, he won two. He was on both of our championship teams in 28 and 32. And now he gets another one here. Good for Steph. I feel a little bit upset because I think we could have been able to take him down if we were full strength, but we weren't. And that's just how the thing, how things go sometimes. Sometimes you have full strength, sometimes you don't. And we we get another round of pretty important retirements. Monta Ellis, after 15 seasons in the league, he goes away, he retires. He might make the Hall of Fame. Marvin Williams, one of the first draft classes we had. Uh, Marcin Gortat goes away, he retires. Doesn't really look like there's any more crazy names. Is there any Hall of Fame? No Hall of Famers from that retirement class. But Monta Ellis does get his jersey retired by the Celtics. He had two decent stints with him. Good for Monta. It's good to see that. Somebody getting their recognition. We are going to reject that rule and then move on to the draft lottery. We have two picks in this draft and they are not in the lottery either one of them so we don't have to worry about that we have pick 20 and pick 15 okay pick 20 and pick 15 now can we do anything with that maybe i don't know maybe we can maybe we can't is there anything that i would even want to draft in this if we go to prospect scouting and we go down to where we possibly would be which would be around here. So you got like Dan Issel, who's an 80 overall projected. Uh, we've got Gar Hurd, who could be there at, he could fall a little bit, you never know. You've got Mark Jackson, who's 72 overall. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of value down here as you get a little bit later. You got this guy with the crazy afro, George Johnson. We might be, I might draft somebody just for depth down there in a little bit later. Maybe like a Dan Issel. And then I might, uh, I might just trade the next pick because I don't think we're going to be finding anything, any gems or anything. So the number one overall pick is Tiny Archibald. Nate Archibald goes to Oklahoma City. Second pick in the draft, Charlotte Hornets. Trade the pick for Vin Baker. And now the Pelicans... They draft Dave Cohens. They really wanted Dave Cohens. Okay. The Trailblazers take Pistol Pete Maravich. Good pick for them. He's teaming up with, with Kevin Durant, if I'm not mistaken. Sam Lacey goes to the Milwaukee Bucks. Raptors are up now. They take Bob Lanier, who kind of low-key looks like Draymond Green a little bit. <laughs> Dan Issel goes top 10 to the Kings. I did not expect that. He was, he was ranked pretty low in the the mocks calvin murphy goes the hawks take john johnson wendell L uh, ladner goes to the bulls charlie scott goes to the suns jeff petrie goes to the wizards billy pultz goes to the timberwolves gar Hurd goes to the celtics and ralph simpson goes to the grizzlies now we're up on the clock and who is uh who is left choose prospect rudy tomjanovich uh, Janovich, I guess, is here. He's been passed over. Do we just take him? Or do we just trade both of these picks? Is this just a wash? Keith Van Horn, Seth Curry, Andrew Wiggins, Tyrone Hill. There's not really a, a crazy guy down here that we could, at least in terms of his comparisons... A lot of Dwayne Dedmons is looking like, and that's not a good thing. I mean, Dwayne Dedmons a good player, but not somebody you want to draft. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything crazy here. I think we probably just trade both of these picks, and we just see what happens later on, like in free agency and stuff. We're not going to have a lot of money, but we could bring some guys back. I guess it just depends on what kind of offers we get. Okay, Sean Bradley, Dean McDaniel, Jaden Springer. Here we go. So we got a 2038 top three protected and an unprotected 39. Don't really like that. A 2038 and a 2040 
That's pretty far away, though. I don't really, don't really like that. Oh, here we go, Dallas. They just were in the finals, but a 37 and a 38. I like that. It might not be a good idea because they were just in the finals. The Thunder. I wonder if the Thunder would give me. Hold on, let me let me try and make my own trade. The Thunder just had the first pick, or they were pretty close to the first pick. So let me go to the OKC Thunder and see if they would trade me. That's the Suns. Let me go to the Thunder and see if they trade me a 37 and a 38 unprotected for the 15th pick. They want the 2036 Denver pick. Okay. I'd be willing to give you my second. They have a counter offer. They still want the Denver pick. I don't want your second rounder, but I do want your 2039 first rounder. They want a 2040 unprotected first round pick from me. And then they'll give me a second rounder from 2038. So I'd be giving them both of my picks. Is that a good idea? Probably not, right? Right? Probably not a good, good idea. What about if I get rid of that, get rid of that, and then do this? Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. We trade to the Thunder. They take Rudy Tomjanovich with the pick. Good for them. Now I'm going to propose a new trade. And we're going to save, or we're going to trade this next pick. And who else has been bad? The Nuggets have been not super bad. The Knicks, the Jazz. Hmm. The Clippers haven't been that great. So let's try and get some Clipper picks for this draft pick. Uh, they're asking to give up way too much. I understand. It's understandable, but I will give you back a player that I have on a deal. I don't have anybody that's signed to a contract that I can give up, that I'm willing to give up, because none of these guys I'm willing to give up. Not McGrady, not Doncic, not DeAndre Ayton, not even Miles Bridges. So we're going to have to find a draft pick. I have a 2040. Do you want a 2040? No, okay. So what about if we just swap? I'll give you my 2038 second. No, I'll give you my 2039 second. Come on, Clippers. What about this second two? <laughs> Do they really value it? Do they really, really value it that much? All right, we won't talk to the Clippers. We'll talk to Milwaukee. How about Milwaukee gives me a pick? Come on. You want to do this. Second rounder. I'm giving you a lot of value here. Second round picks are valuable. You never know who you're going to draft. Doesn't look like the Bucks are falling for it. What about the Grizzlies? They have some decent picks. I'll take the Kings pick off your hands if you want to know. Okay. <laughs> what about your own pick? That's the 76ers. Actually, you know what? Give me the 76ers pick. Yeah, sure. 2037. There they go. They take my pick. And we get out of there with some extra draft picks. So that's cool. Nate Archibald ends up being an 80. Dave Cohen's is an 83. Good for them. Pete Maravich is a 79. Dan Issa was an 80. I wanted to take him. I didn't think he'd he'd get taken that high up. All right, that was a kind of an interesting draft class, but we knew what we were getting into when we uh, spun the wheel. Will Chamberlain accepts his 61 million dollar player option, so that's good. <laughs> and T Mac accepts his two year team option. Uh, Seth Curry, or Seth Curry, Steph Curry declined his player option. Whoa. Okay, we've got some developments. So did Blake Griffin, Mashburn, and Sean Elliott. We've got some developments here. Qualifying offers. We will offer the extension to both LeBron and Darko. Sure. Why not? Steph Curry is unrestricted. Do we bring back Stefan? He's no longer in. I didn't mean to offer him that contract. I'm sorry, Steph. <laughs> I didn't mean to offer you that contract. Wade is here, but he's restricted. I don't think we're going to be able to bring in Wade. Our team, as of right now, 
is Kobe, Wilt, McGrady, Luka, Aiton, and Bridges. But we got to bring back LeBron and Darko. So, restricted free agency. LeBron, got to bring him back. Uh, who else do we have bird rights on? We have bird rights on Jalen Suggs. It wouldn't kill me to bring him back. And then Darko, we've used up all my offers. LeBron's expect prepared to offer a uh, thing. Uh, yeah, we'll match his contract because I think the contract I was going to offer him was a little bit more expensive. So we'll match that. We're paying a super max extension for, uh, for what's his face? Jalen Suggs. Let's go get the bird rights on Darko. Offer him a contract. And I think everybody else is ready to go. Darko's ready to agree. Okay. There we go. I think we made it to free agency. We have Jalen Suggs back on a five-year deal. We could trade him in a couple seasons because we do have Luka. And I'm wanting Luka to develop. Shooting guard, we got Kobe and Tracy. Small forward, we got LeBron, who should be back from his injury. Actually, he's probably not going to be back for a while. Miles Bridges on his deal. We have no power forwards. We have Will Chamberlain, DeAndre Ayton, and Darko. So we need to sign some players, mainly a power forward. Is there a power forward that is cheap and good? <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a power forward that's cheap and good. Is there a center that is cheap and good that we could play at the power forward position? Probably not, right? Kendrick Perkins. I don't want to give you a crazy contract, Kendrick, but... Oh, he's insulted. Well, why don't you just stop asking for so much money and then don't get insulted when I can't pay it? <laughs> Jeez. I don't think we're going to be finding anybody that's super cheap. Does Boris Dio happen to not want a crazy amount of money? And we can get away with it. There's got to be good players at small forward, right? That don't want crazy amounts of money? Or do they all want crazy amounts of money? <laughs> it looks like they all want crazy amounts of money. And I don't think we got the money to sign anybody. I'll offer Kata Bates D up. Oh, Kyle Korver, why do you want all your money? Oh, David Lee, come on, man. Why you gotta be like that? Herb Jones even said no? If Herb Jones is saying no, you're in a bad spot. Boris Dio accepted. We're still waiting on a couple guys. The Houston Rockets, no! The Houston Rockets, Rockets. I didn't realize he was restricted. Well, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks a fat one. Are they going to match David West? Yeah, they match David West. Uh, you don't have enough room on the salary cap to sign Nikita Bates Diop. Great. I didn't want to sign him anyway. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We got 10 players. We need to sign three at the minimum on the, on the minimum. Three players at the minimum on the minimum. We don't have the bird rights on Darren Carlson anymore. I'll give him a, a minimum extension. Uh, who's here? Omar or Omri Caspi? Offer oh, you, John Green. Ooh, this guy Earl Clark can shoot the ball at least. Or do we want Derek Brown? He can kind of shoot the ball too. But there's Taj. I mean, we might as well bring back Taj if we have the opportunity to. So we can get those three guys back. So now we have three guys at point, two shooting guards. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, I think we're good. We don't have any money, but I think we're good. <laughs> we're making it work. Don't worry. LeBron's up to a 95 even with his injury. 
Jalen Suggs is down to an 88. T Max up to an 84. So is Luka. Wilt's dropping. DeAndre Ayton's up three to an 81. Bridges is up set, uh, up one to a 77. Darko's even up one. Look at that. I think we might have to play this season out with Jalen Suggs and then trade him uh, after next se after this next season. And then we'll just go with Luca at point from there, and then we'll look to see what we can get from from Jalen Suggs because he's just going to be too much money, especially when we got to try and bring back. We got to try and sign Luca. We got to sign Trace McGrady. We got to sign possibly DeAndre. Well, not possibly. We got to sign DeAndre Ayton. We possibly even got to bring back Will Chamberlain because he's on the last year of his deal because he just signed his. Uh, he just accepted his player options. So we've got a lot of decisions to make next year. But that's for future juice to decide. A little bit of a disappointing episode because of the way the injuries fell for us. But hey, man, that's the NBA. You can't control it all the time. You can't control everything at once. And they want to start Wilt at power forward. I'd rather have DeAndre at power forward and Wilt at center. I don't think that's a bad idea. So the bench is going to be Luka, McGrady, Bridges, Barrett, and Darko. Then, oh, we also brought in Rudy Fernandez. Okay, I don't hate that. I'd probably rather have Rudy be in instead of Taj, if we're being honest. Okay. Is this team good? Yeah, probably. It's probably good enough to get back to where we were, especially if we have LeBron healthy. I mean, we probably could have beaten the Warriors... Or beat the Warriors. I just say that because they had Steph. We probably could have beaten the Mavericks if we had LeBron. Even if Wilt was injured, if we had LeBron. If we were rolling out a lineup with Jalen Suggs, Kobe, LeBron, Aiton, and then whoever our center would have been. Or whoever our power forward would have been. I don't hate that. I think that could have beaten Steph. But, I mean, we had both of them injured. Luckily, they're both healthy now, so that's good. LeBron's back, and so is Wilt. Hopefully they don't get injured again, and hopefully we don't get hit with crazy amounts of season-ending injuries like we did this past episode. So we had a little bit of a failure. Didn't the draft picks didn't work out the way we wanted them to? But it wasn't really that great of a draft class. Sometimes you're gonna have uh, L's of a draft class. That's just the way things go. We have three first-round picks this year. We have our own. We have the 76ers, and we have the Thunder. We only have the Thunder because I think the Thunder are gonna be bad. And if we're good, I might trade our pick for another pick next year. Hopefully that works out. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.